Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Laura Trump, Wanted for Questioning. I'm ready to get into these questions today. I hope you got some good stuff. I hope we get some mean ones today. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, question number one. Where is the accountability and transparency in our government? Oh, my God. Wouldn't we all like to know about that one? Um, I think the interesting thing is when Donald Trump was in office, man, did we have transparency at least on you know everything he was doing, everything he was thinking. Remember when he used to walk out to Marine One and he would stop right in front of all the crazed press and just stop and just boom, 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 point and at, at, answer whatever it was that they were throwing out at him. Um, he really was telling you everything that was going on and they didn't like that very much. And isn't it interesting they couldn't wait to impeach him, not once, but twice. They couldn't wait to get him out of office and keep him from ever going back in the White House. Now, why would that be? Hmm, maybe because he was exposing a lot of these disgusting swamp creatures in Washington, D.C. Accountability, um, I don't know. It may come on January 20th, 2025, when Donald Trump is sworn in as our 47th president. Um, the transparency certainly would come back then. But I do think that we need to make some major, major moves as it relates to our federal government. People do not trust a lot of our fundamental institutions like our Department of Justice. It seems very two-sided um, to a lot of people. It doesn't feel like equal applica application of our laws when you look at the way that, of course, Donald Trump is being treated versus someone like Joe Biden, who seemingly has sold out our country for decades to enrich himself and his family really think we ought to be investigating that situation. Um, but it feels like that the tide is turning as far as I'm concerned. I feel like a lot of people are getting sick and tired of it. A lot of people are saying, you know what, enough is enough. We got to take this country back. We got to get somebody in office who is going to be transparent, who is going to hold people accountable, who have done things that are really egregious in terms of the future of this country. And I believe that that is why a lot of people will be going to vote on November of 2024 for Donald J. Trump. And I believe he'll be the 47th president of the United States. So that may be when you get the accountability and transparency. Okay, next question. Has your family begun Halloween preparations? Oh my God, like buying things? You know, I went to the store gosh, yesterday, pumpkins out everywhere, okay. We're mid-September, as far as I'm concerned. Until we get to like the last week of September, then maybe we start bringing in the pumpkin stuff. I know the pumpkin spice stuff has been in for like at least since the end of August. It's a little much for me. It's a little too soon. Uh, I'm more of a last minute type person with my decorations. And by decorations, I mean, maybe I buy one of those mini pumpkins at the grocery store, set a couple of them out in a little display. I would like to say that I had more time to get down on those things, but I don't. Kids' costumes, uh, we vacillate and we vary. We're all over the place with what we're going to be. Sometimes I hear a bunny. Uh, sometimes I hear Princess Elsa. Sometimes we're back to a rainbow dog, which is what my daughter was last year. So I don't want to make any moves too quickly. I can't pull the trigger on ordering any of these Halloween costumes until we're really locked in, until I know these kids are not gonna come back at me with the, oh, I asked for macaroni and cheese 10 minutes ago. I really wanted uh, butter noodles. No, no, we're not playing that game. Mm -mm. I'm gonna be waiting till I'm gonna say right around my birthday. Some of y'all might know when that is. Columbus Day, the official day, look it up. And then I might consider doing a little more Halloween prep, but no, we are not anywhere near ready for Halloween in my house. Next question. Can you tell us about your horseback riding and how you find the time to ride as a mom of two littles? I'll be real honest with you. This summer, I rode twice. That's right, because I don't have a lot of time for it. Um, I started riding horses, gosh, probably when I was like eight, nine years old maybe. My neighbor in my parents' neighborhood growing up 
had horses sort of down the street from where I grew up. And every now and again, she would let me come with her to her barn. And I loved horses. I loved being around them. She would let me ride her horses. Sort of like got the bug and everybody knows who, who rides horses. They understand what that's about. Then I begged my parents for riding lessons. So they finally let me take some riding lessons. But then that, you know, it's not cheap. Um, it takes up a lot of time. There's a lot that goes along with it. So there came a time in my life where I had to choose between cheerleading, which is also expensive and horseback riding. So I went with cheerleading because obviously, um, and then I came back to riding horses a little later on in life, but tell you what, nothing is like getting on a horse, jumping around a little bit, cantering around. Just, it's like, all I need is like a good couple jumps. Just give me on a horse for like 20 minutes. And it's a very rejuvenating situation for me. So I do not have the time currently that I wish I did to dedicate to it. Maybe when my kids are a little more self-sufficient, I'll get a little more time to, to get into that. But, um, Currently, I'm not doing as much riding as I used to. I used to ride, you know, twice a weekend at least. Um, these days, we're talking twice a summer. So I'll report back on that. Maybe more time to come. Okay. Next question. Uh, oh. <laughs> Worst Christmas present you ever got. Oh, my God. You're trying to put me on the spot here? Worst Christmas present. Oh, okay. Okay. I remember, so my mom used to take me to the Burlington Coat Factory. Real throwback here. My cousin Victoria and I used to go to Burlington Coat Factory with my Aunt Mary, her mom, and my mom. And this was like a drive. It was like an hour or two from, from my, my parents' house. So it was like a day trip. This was a real big ordeal growing up. And I remember we went there and it was like a month before Christmas or something. And my mom really wanted me to pick out a jacket that she would then give me later on for Christmas. I was probably like 11 or 12 years old, okay? And I remember I told her for some reason, there was some jacket and she was like, do you like this one? Remember I told her I liked it. I really didn't like it. And then I opened it up on Christmas morning and I guess she could tell I didn't like it. And I felt so sad about that reaction because I knew that like, my mom had bought this jacket thinking I was gonna love it. And I really didn't. And I still feel bad about that. I'm sorry, mom. So I don't want to say that was the worst present, but that was probably a dumb move on my part. I should have been upfront about it. I should have just been like, don't like this. This one is not for me. A little too much flowery stuff, a little too much pink, whatever. Um, so that, that one sticks out. Other than that, obviously, since I've known Eric Trump, all the presents have been great because he's He's the best husband ever, and he always does the right thing with those Christmas presents. So shout out to Eric Trump. Next question. Oh, <laughs> when will you go away? Ooh, I don't think anytime soon. Sorry, sweetie. No time soon. We got a lot of stuff to do. We've got a really big election. In case you haven't heard, coming up November 2024, um, and we're going to be full court press until then. It starts now. It starts here. It starts today. So I hope you're paying attention because we've got a country to save. We don't have time to sit back. We don't have time to take a break. I think you're going to see a lot more of me, a lot more of all of us in the Trump family coming up. So I hope you are ready for that. I'm not going away anytime soon. And I'll tell you another one who is not going away anytime soon, Donald J. Trump. Get ready for a full-fledged scorched earth situation coming down the pike. I hope you're ready for that because I think most of the country is. Thank you for asking. Okay. Next question. How long have you been working out? Gosh, I, I don't remember like a time I didn't work out. I think it was sort of like a natural progression of things. I grew up playing a lot of different sports and I remember like the conditioning for sports and yeah, initially not really loving the conditioning because it's hard. I mean, if you you're working out hard and your body, you're making changes in your body, sometimes you got to put in a little work. It's got to be a little pain, but then later on, you know that that's going to be progress down the road. 
Um, and I remember one of the moments where that kind of all changed for me, where it went from being like, ugh, I don't want to do the conditioning to being like, oh, I kind of think that this is great because it makes me feel good and this is something to accomplish and all of that was the cheerleading team in high school. I forget what the issue was, but we had done something that upset our coach. So she made us run five miles around the practice football fields at our school. And I remember that I was the only one on the cheerleading team who actually continued running the whole time. And I didn't even know I could do that, run five miles at that point. What? That was never in my repertoire. So I was like, oh, this is kind of cool that I did that. And it was like that moment where it kind of all started to change for me. And then I got addicted to it. And I guess it's better to be addicted to, you know, working out than other things. You can just ask Hunter Biden about that. Um, so that, I mean, it's kind of been forever. And it becomes part of your routine and becomes part of just what you do. And if I go like days on end without working out, do not come around me because it's not going to be good. It's going to be a bad scene. It's going to be a bad situation. I get real antsy. It's just, it's not good. I need that. It's an outlet for me. Um, and I really do love it. And so um, I guess that's better than, than the alternatives. So yeah, forever, I guess, is the answer to that. Okay. Let's see. Next question. What would be your first question after waking up from being cryogenically frozen for a hundred years? My God. Right now, quite frankly, I'd ask, is the United States of America still standing? Because I got to tell you, feels like we're dangerously close to that really, you know, kind of slipping away from us, so to speak. Uh, I keep thinking about that movie, Idiocracy, where the guy is frozen for like thousands of years and then and he's just an average Joe. And he wakes up and he's the smartest person alive because society has degraded so rapidly that people are just really, really stupid. The world is falling apart. You know, I don't even know if, if 100 years from now uh, we wouldn't be in a, a spot like that based on how crazy I feel like things have gotten in so many respects. So I'd probably ask if the old U.S. of A. is still around, if we still got the stars and stripes on the flag, uh, and I'd ask who the president was at that point. And I would just hope that it wasn't some sort of a robot or something. Cause man, it kind of feels like we're headed in that direction. All right. Well, that'll do it for us here at Lara Trump wanted for questioning. Good questions today. We got a mean one in there. Wouldn't too mean. No, there's more out there. Um, so send us your questions. You can post under this episode. You can go to any of our social media platforms and ask us the questions there. And we'll be back with the answers next time for another episode of Laura Trump Wanted for Questioning. So I'm like a lot of people. I love to wear an Apple watch, but I hate how it looks. And I scoured the internet to search for the best looking Apple watch cases I could find. And I found it goldandcherry.com. They have absolutely beautiful watches. As you can see here, everything is waterproof. Everything looks good with different outfits. You can get sporty, you can get fancy but they are great quality, uh, made out of Delaware in the United States of America. And they have been kind enough to give me a promo code that I can share with you if you wanna get your hands on one of these as well. It's Lara T, L-A-R-A-T is the promo code to get yourself a discount at goldandcherry.com. And not only do they make Apple Watch cases, they also make great products for iPads and iPhones, keyboards, your desktop, everything you could possibly need, goldandcherry.com. Use promo code LARAT so you can get yourself one of these today too. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always gonna shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support 
independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump, and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said this is the pillow that i want to sleep with and i gotta tell you she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow so it's a big hit around our house my dogs also uh happen to sleep on my pillow dog beds so all around the trump household we're big fans if you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code trump again promo code trump you will not only save money but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of america inflation has impacted all of our lives i don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor and unfortunately it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. A lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going.